Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this effect. Now, this is pretty uncomplicated, but it's not without interest. And a lot of you ask me kind of how a, an idea develops. And this is an example of where I was actually trying to do something completely different. But that led me to something that I thought looked quite nice and I thought I'd share it with you. So. Anyway, let's get down to business. OK, so first of all, let's check out our project setup. So I've got 90, 20, 1080, 24 frames a second and a duration of five seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the text tool and I'm going to type the word zoetrope. And then I'm going to come over to format. I'm going to just make it as large as I want it to be. So that's like 400 or something. Central line, come over to properties, reset, come over to text, adjust the baseline. Now there really ought to be a better way of, of setting up text in motion. It's just it's just amateurish, all this stuff that you have to do go through so many different processes to get a piece of text that's center aligned. Anyway, that's a subject for a different day. So the next thing I'm going to do is to apply a filter to this group. So I'm going to come to filters, distortion and bump map. Now I need to give it a bump source. So I'm going to make a new group. I'm going to put that group behind everything else. I'm going to come to the library generators and I'm going to look for checkerboard. Bring that into this new group here. I'm going to come to the inspector. Now the type that I want is not grid, it's radial and the tile height that I want is 32. Then I can comfortably turn off this group. I can come over to my bump map and use that checkerboard as the source. So coming over to the bump map filter, I want to set the direction to be 90. because I want it to come sort of left to right, as it were, rather than any other kind of direction. Then I'm going to set the amount to 2. And then I'm going to keyframe the mix value. So I'm going to come to two seconds on the timeline. Set a keyframe for the mix value at 100%. I'm going to step forward five frames, one, two, three, four, five, and set that mix value to nothing. So then I'm going to come to the first frame. I'm going to set a keyframe for the amount. Then I'm going to step back forward to 205 and set that amount to 0.2. So the overall effect of that looks like this. And that's not actually what I want. And the reason it's not what I want is because this group needs to be set to fixed resolution. I've got a whole other tutorial on fixed resolution that explains all the ins and outs of this really complicated feature. But you, you really do need to kind of get to grips with it when you want to do this sort of stuff. So you can see how very different that 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 now is. And it's already starting to look quite interesting. So the next stage is to add filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and also filters, color and threshold. So I'm going to come to 116 on the timeline. I'm going to set a keyframe for the Gaussian blur. I'm going to enter a value of 120. I'll step back forward to 205. And I'll set that Gaussian blur value down to 12. And you can probably see that we're starting to get the effect that I want here. What we also need to do is adjust this threshold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through for a threshold of 0.8. And I'm going to reduce the smoothness down to something like 0 0.06. And that just kind of sharpens up the edges. And now we're getting this much more interesting effect which is pretty much exactly what I want. So as I say, this is not a complicated effect, but let's just try and make it look just a little bit nicer. So I'm going to make a new group, put this group at the back of everything else, and to it, I'm going to add object generators, color solid. Also when I'm at it, I'm going to add object generators, lens flare. Okay, so my color solid, I certainly don't want to be blue. I want it to be essentially black. Actually, let's, let's not do that. Let's select the color that I want somewhere like that. 
So I'm going to select my hue and I want it to be nice and dark somewhere around that, just so we're not complete black. And coming over to my lens flare, I want to set that Y value to something like 700. So it's coming off the top of the frame. I also want to set that color there. Just want to give it some saturation so it's not white. So actually pump the saturation quite a lot like so. And then I want to keyframe its intensity. So I'm going to come to the first frame, hit an intensity keyframe, set that to zero, step forward to two seconds, set that intensity up to two, and then come forward to four seconds and set the intensity back down to one. So just it's going to give a little bit of a sort of a grow like that. Now you can probably see that we've got a problem here with our text and that's because of using this threshold as the, the method. What I normally do is I use a levels on here and I control the alpha, but I just wanted to do this a slightly different way this time just for fun. So what we actually need to do is not use this group as the thing that we see, but merely use it as the, the mat for the thing that we do see. So again, I'm going to make a new group at the top of everything. Into it, I'm going to add object generators color solid. And to the group, I'm going to add an image mask and I'm going to use this group here, the one that we made with all that fancy stuff as the source. And I'm going to switch the source channel to luminance. And probably as I did that, if I switch back to alpha, you can see the difference that makes. The luminance is just the white bits, which are being nicely chopped off by the, by the threshold. And this gives us a very different result when we composite it like this. So obviously we don't want blue. We want something over here in this range. And I think something like that is going to be good. Now, actually what I should have done here, because I want to add an extra filter, is I should have added the image mask to the color solid. So let's just drag that onto the color solid instead. Come back to the group and come to filters, glow, and let's add neon. And that's just going to make things a little bit more fun. Let's set the outer brightness down to one. The inner glow value let's set to eight. And let's have no edge intensity. And I also want to keyframe the outer glow value. So first of all, I'm going to come to two seconds and then I'm going to hit a keyframe for the outer glow, set that up to 250, step forward four seconds and set that value down to just 60. And that'll give us a sort of more intense effect at the beginning like so. And it'll just die down like that. So just two more things I'd like to do. I'm going to make a new group at the top. I'm going to come to import, come to my assets folder and import the thing called magic dust. We need to set its blend mode to add. And then we also need to come to filters, color, color curves. And I'm going to just reduce the blue, both ends like that until we've got a more harmonious result. And I'm going to reduce the layers opacity down to something like 40. I really don't want to make too much of this. That's kind of doing the trick. And I also want to add to this filters stylize vignette. And I'm going to set the Y center to 540. And the darken, I'm going to crank all the way up to one. And the fall off also, I'm going to crank up to one. So then it's kind of more in the path of the, the light at the top there, which I think is better. So then the other thing I want to do is, um, depending on how this screen capture is working, you're probably seeing some really vicious banding. And what we need to do is we need to essentially close everything down, make a new group at the top of everything, object new group, put everything into that group, and then come to filters, stylize, add noise. Let's select blue noise as the type and let's set the mix value down to something like five. And 
Don't know how this is going to work for the screen recording, but this in general should uh, help to sort everything out. So there you go. That's the effect. I hope that's been interesting. As I say, not very complicated, but got a few things in there that I think are probably quite interesting. So thanks for watching and see you again soon.